What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Now today I want to talk about practical tips for gamers. Now this video is based upon a book called Reality is Broken by Jane McGonagall. Now in this book, Jane talks about lots of different things and I haven't finished the book completely so I don't want to be overselling on the book yet but I am enjoying my time with it and her, you know, her main point is the fact that games are pretty darn awesome and not only are they awesome, which I 100% agree with, they help people find happiness and find purpose in this crazy modern day world of ours which I think if you're watching this you probably can agree that video games are awesome and they do make you happier as a person but she goes further than that she talks about in depth about the creativity it creates and how it makes you a better person and how it can provide in fact it can actually complement and fulfill us better than real life. Jane argues that at times life can leave us feeling a little bit empty and at times lacking in purpose and with hard work in the real world doesn't always make us feel appreciated and welcomed and at times when you're doing a lot of hard work for somebody else you don't always get the rewards that you feel like you deserve and it makes you feel like you lack in purpose. That's where video games come in, the format where we choose our own difficulty, we choose our own battles and we choose our own hard work and coming with the choice of hard work comes with a great sense of pride, appreciation, creativity and purpose that the real life just can't provide. At the end of this book, which I haven't finished the book but I have skipped due to the appendices, she has in it an appendix called Practical Tips for Gamers and that's what I want to talk about in this video. She lists five tips that she would give gamers not to be the, not to make you the best gamer in the world but to maximise your happiness and creativity so that you can be the best version of yourself by using gaming in a positive way to better yourself and everyone around you. And what I want to do is I want to read you these five tips, I want to tell you my opinions on them then I then created a couple tips of my own and I'm going to put my own little platinum bro spin on it. So let, without further ado, let's get on with the video. Okay, so the tip number one which Jane gives, which I think is definitely the most controversial tip in the actual book. I say controversial, it is. It's going to upset some people, unfortunately, which is you should only play video games for 21 hours, no more than that. Now, obviously, if you want to be the best gamer, if you want to be the best at anything, then you can continue to play and you do more than that. But I'm not talking about being the best gamer here. I'm talking about being the most creative and happiest version of yourself, using gaming in a really positive way to better yourself. And she argues that 21 hours after 21 hours, you get a rapid decline in the positives that gaming provides. And then when you hit 40 hours a week, it actually turns into a rapid decline. And 40 hours of gaming or more actually has more negative impacts on your mental health, your well-being and your creativity than any positive. So once you hit that 40 hours mark, that can be really really time consuming and have a negative impact on yourself. I think not many people play 40 hours a week. I think I do know a lot of younger kids. It's worth mentioning as well. She just she just she doesn't actually mention any studies or anything like that, so I can't back up her claims. It's her opinions, but she's obviously quite an accomplished person in the industry. And she goes on to say that especially in teens and adolescents that 40 hours a week can be quite detrimental to their to other aspects of their life. And she mentions this thing called gamer regret, which is the idea that the more you game, if you game too much, you feel like you're missing out on other aspects of your life. And I would argue that when you are hitting that 21 or more hours, that you do feel like you are neglecting other parts of your life. And let's be honest, if you've got a 40 hour a week job, you've got other commitments, you've got a family, most people can't fit in 40 hours a week. I would argue if someone's got a full time job and gaming 40 hours a week, other aspects of their life are definitely lacking. I think she's saying pretty much 21 hours is around about the magic point, which to be honest, I think is, is a good point. I think it, I struggle to fit in 21 hours some weeks. Some weeks I game more, some days I gain game six, seven hours in a day. And those are the days when I actually think, are the days I actually feel the most sluggish, the most, to be honest, sad. And I think she argues that maybe two or three hours in one day is a good amount to actually play. Anything more than that does start to have negative impacts on your mental health and your and how much benefit, benefits you're actually receiving from gaming and I would agree with that once I hit my three four hour mark in a single day I feel like I'm not really benefiting anything other than just progressing in the game or the story. Tip number two is that when you're playing video games it is better to play with friends and families and people you know rather than alone or by yourself. She's then coming from the idea that playing with somebody else with relationships you already have with people you know it strengthens those bonds, it strengthens the social bonds. We as humans are very social animals. We need that interaction with other people. And playing by yourself can make you lack in those social interactions. Now this isn't to say you don't get emotional and mental 
benefits from playing games single player. Like I've played a lot of games which I've thoroughly enjoyed. They've made me a better person, they've made me cre more creative, they've made me more challenging. But also we can't neglect the fact that we're all very social animals and we love to spend time with other people. Even the most introverted of us still need that social interaction. And she says in her book that really you should try and split half of your time from single player and multiplayer stuff. And to be honest, as someone who does that quite frequently, like I'm currently playing a single player game and I'm playing Diablo 3 at the moment as, as I'm making this, I do think that I actually have more fun and I feel more alert and more. my mood is definitely higher when I come off a multiplayer session with some of my friends for a couple of hours than when I come off playing a single player game for a couple of hours by myself. Now once again, another one for co-op play, or at least not necessarily co-op play but social interaction. A little bit harder to do because of the current climate, but that is to play video games with people in person as much as possible. Again, it strengthens social bonds. They don't have to be necessarily multiplayer, they can be single player games where you're sharing an experience with somebody else. Like some of my best memories when I actually think back are, you know, playing FIFA with a lot of friends, playing a single player game that's really intense with a couple of friends. I actually played The Last of Us with a couple of friends the first time and I remember like sort of, it was that shared challenge and that shared pain amongst us that made us have more enjoyment with the game and again a great game called A Way Out where you can play it in couch co-op again fantastic game and not only that I feel like it was really beneficial to have it with somebody else. So that's another tip from James. So tip number four is that cooperative play is more beneficial than competitive play. So working as a group is more beneficial than working against people. As Again, it strengthens those social bonds, it has a sense of togetherness which is really important for us as humans when you think about it, you know, when you think of like some of our most emotional times is when we're joined together towards something and I think that is what she's saying is when we teamwork is when humans thrive, it's how we are, how we are, it's how I'm talking to you through this camera. It's, it's all teamwork, it's all how it's, how the world is being formed in its way, in its entirety at the moment and I think, again, she's just saying that rather than playing against people in a free-for-all on Call of Duty, that playing in a team is more beneficial for your ability to lateral think, for happiness and for your creativity to solve problems, which I think is very true because most big problems are never solved by one person. Yes, you know, we've got the famous people like Isaac Newton who, you know, solved certain problems, but at the same time, most big problems are solved by teams and that is what you're saying with this tip. Tip number five is that don't neglect the creative games. Creative games have a really positive impact on your person. And by this, she means games like Minecraft, Halo Create, like Guitar Hero. Now, if we think how popular games like Minecraft have all have been since it was creation, that kind of just does support this tip massively. Minecraft is such an amazing game where you can really just make things your own. You can create your own problems, you can solve your own problems. Like how many times, I don't know about you guys, but I've spent like tens of hours building these massive fortresses on Minecraft just because I've been enjoying doing it and because it's it's challenging but it's fun and I'm having a great time and I'm having lots of rewarding time with it and it provides an environment, it, it provides a situation where you can explore your mind. Yes, single player games are great, linear games are great for telling a story but sometimes it's better for us as players to have an environment where we can create our own worlds, our own stories. It allows us to think laterally how we would solve our own problems that we've created, we've devised and it can really get you your brain flowing and again it also invites in these sort of situations that teamwork element as well if you have people who you can play with. Okay so there were five tips from the book Reality is Broken by Jane McGonnell. Really enjoying this book so far. I think those tips are all really really interesting and they're really insightful for someone who never really thought about cooperative play being so important but as somebody who has now started reading it understanding the psychology behind video games why we love them so much. Okay so now I want to give you a few tips from El Platinum Bro. Now these are tips that are again towards gaming but a little bit more different a little bit more personal for the people for, for a single independent gamer okay so my first tip from L Platinum Bro is that make sure a game is challenging make sure you challenge yourself just because a game is challenging doesn't mean it isn't fun and I think when you pose when you're faced against difficult challenges in video games like challenges that again you want to face it allows you to think differently to get your brain flowing understand your problem solving do your own research how to get better at practice and it creates for a very rewarding experience. I recently played Bloodborne this year and I can say after playing that, my first real challenging single player game, that that game created an environment where I had to think laterally, I had to try and solve problems that I'd never faced before, problems that I wanted to face, and when I did overcome them I had such a big sense of pride and happiness and I was really, really happy that I had been able to beat certain bosses and it's a different kind of immersion when you're playing a really difficult game and you're so focused. It's a, it is a term in psychology that they refer to as flow, which is kind of the idea that you're so immersed in something that nothing else you can really think about anything else other than the task at hand and you kind of get lost in the moment. And I think challenging games really create that situation and that environment to experience flow. 
Now this next tip, again for myself, is a little bit different and it's something that I definitely fall guilty of myself, which is fun comes first when you're playing games. Games shouldn't feel like a chore, they have to be fun. Now, now fun doesn't necessarily mean easy, I'm not saying that at all, but to achieve the happiness from games that we desire and all the positivity from games, we have to make sure that we're enjoying the experience. Now, that means being able to walk away from games that you don't necessarily enjoy playing because you aren't going to be getting the benefits at all if you're not having a great time and you aren't, you can't achieve these things like pride and flow if you're not enjoying it. And it comes back to the exact same thing that life lacks which is work that we want to do because humans want to do hard work. We don't want to sit around as much as some people may say being bored. You know, if you watch if you watch eight hours of TV, you know how bad you feel after doing that. We feel lazy and horrible. We want challenge. We need we need challenge in our lives as humans. And I think that again, if you're playing games that you aren't enjoying, then you're just putting yourself in a situation that you are in your normal life, which is doing something you don't really want to do and then you're not feeling rewarded for it. So make sure you're playing games that challenge you but also you're having a lot of fun with playing. And there you have it guys there was five tips from Jane McGonagall from her book reality is broken and then two tips from myself platinum bro hopefully this has educated you hopefully you can go out there and have a great time gaming you can take gaming for what it is which is an amazing piece of art and if you really want to read this book which i highly recommend i'll put a link down below to the to amazon where i bought it i am not affiliated to this book in any way i just loved it and i, I love what i'm reading so far and that idea in the appendix at the very end i thought was so fascinating i thought enough people just didn't know about it so i hope this has helped enlighten you and maybe made you a little bit of a better gamer now let me know down below if you agree with these tips if you don't agree with them if you think maybe that they're out of place if they're wrong right i'd love to know and let's get a bit of a dialogue going because i love talking to you guys in the comments thanks so much for watching this video don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video take it easy